Disclaimer. People tend to think that the creativity of art and the concrete logic of math don't really mix. But in actuality, that can't be further from the truth, and there may be more math concepts working behind the scenes than you might think. Hi, I'm Chema, and this is Math and Art. First, let's take some reference images and break them down to their core to help understand how artists actually make art look like art. Every structure can be stripped to the angles and lines it's built upon, every person or animal can be deconstructed into simple shapes and forms, and every design has a set of ratios or proportions that it follows. These three examples also work interchangeably. Take the human body, for example. The shapes artists use to map out a figure have to follow a consistent ratio to work well together. One of the most useful ratios is the ratio between a person's height and their head. The average male is a bit less than 8 heads high. Their arms and legs also have certain guidelines for length. Changing the height to body ratio can affect what kind of a character an artist portrays. A smaller head can convey a more cool or mature character, while a larger head can convey a younger or cuter character. Once the proportions and basic sketch have been laid out, we move to the line art. Many drawing softwares have line tools to help with this, and the most useful one is easily the curve tool. Every curve this tool makes is a parabola, or at least a section of one. By merging these segmented parabolas, we can get very clean lines for almost any shape. And while on the subject of lines, they can also be used to help us convey perspective. Perspective has three types, one point, two point, and three point, all of which help create a feeling of depth using radial perspective lines coming from what we call a vanishing point. Using perspective lines, constructing almost any shape is possible. Even if part of an object is obscured, we can create temporary perspective lines to determine how the object looks anyway, allowing us to build on top of it. These objects can also be put any distance from the viewer. As an object gets further away from the viewer and closer to the vanishing point, it simply gets reduced by a scale factor, guided by the perspective lines. This effect is called foreshortening. We can further exaggerate or soften this foreshortening effect using angles. By moving the vanishing points closer and making angles appear sharper, we increase the visual distance between objects. The reverse happens when we move the vanishing points away, making the angles softer. This is called field of view, and can be seen easier in a game like Minecraft with easily definable edges. Turning the field of view up makes an object seem further away, which is better for dramatic scenery, while turning it down makes objects seem closer, which is better for calm scenery. The math goes even further beyond just the construction of a scene. After marking a light source, artists often use lines to map out shadow projection. Drawing a ray from the direction of the light source to any other point can help determine where shadows would be and how dark to make them. Intersecting the ray with the edge of an object shows the edge of the shadow the object casts. Shadows a flat object casts on itself are usually hard shadows with defined edges, while shadows a round object casts on itself are usually soft shadows fading from light to dark. And with all that, a piece is pretty much ready to be brought to life. So what does all of this look like put together? Well, before we get into that, here are some rapid-fire honorable mentions for math in art. Parallel and perpendicular lines can be used to convey directional lighting when using a shading technique called hatching. They can also be used in stylized art to show dramatic motion or shadow. An incredible example is the opening credits for Netflix's Castlevania. The use of angles or curves can greatly impact a character's appearance. The rule of thirds is when an artist places their focal point in one of the outer thirds of a piece to make a more interesting composition that emphasizes balance. On the other hand, symmetry is used to convey unity or importance and emphasizes the focal point over the background. There's also a ton of technicalities with softwares, like selection manipulation, color accuracy and curves, pen pressure sensitivity, anti-aliasing levels, layer effects, and much, much more. So with that out of the way, enjoy the speed paint.
and that's it. A lot of that was just coloring, but I assure you that everything I explained earlier was running through my head as I painted it. Uh, I'm guessing this video is going to be around 8 minutes once I finish editing, so sorry about that. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed. It was a lot of fun. It was a great way to learn and improve my skills. Uh, however, this did take ages, so uh, shameless self-plug. Please follow my art and entertainment account on Instagram, Onichem, don't ask by the way, uh, where I'm decently active. Uh, I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Raid Shadowlift, The Magnus Archives, also known as the best horror podcast of all time, as well as the Maiden Abyss OST also known as the second best original soundtrack of all time. They kept me sane through this, and you can find them both here on YouTube. Thank you for watching, this has been Math and & Art, and I still don't have a proper outro.